Hi, everybody, and welcome to Paste Studio on the Road. We're live right now at Pam Nation headquarters in New York City with Bruce Malski. Bruce, it's great to see you again. Thanks for doing this. Great to see you, Brad. Yeah, man. Yeah. Nice to be back with you in your remote secret location here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is. Uh, it has been a pleasure for us to build pop-up versions of the studio all over mm -hmm. North America, you know, and that's very great. happy to be here in New York City again. Um, and congratulations to you on the record. Everywhere you go, which the internet can see right now, is lovely album artwork um is this album is out in the world and we're about to hear two songs from it and we're gonna hear a third as well what do yes. you want to do first today i'm gonna start with one that's not on there because that cd that you just graciously held up is uh, me all playing guitar um which has been a uh, was my first instrument but i'm gonna give you a couple on the fiddle because i can't not play the fiddle and and uh i'll just play you an old favorite it's called peg and all it's an industrial Re industrial revolution song and then i'll go into some kind of fiddle tune after that so here we go. <laughs>
Ah. Feels good to loosen up and play after a long drive. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for starting off our day the right way. Oh, I was uh, my pleasure. Having, having a slow time waking up this morning, but I'm fully <laughs> awake right now. So thanks for good. Uh, for doing this. Good. Um, when you when you collect songs, uh, do you do you recall the moment that you were exposed to that particular song, or has it been kind of just in the ether for you for forever? That's really interesting how you phrase that question. It's a really interesting question to me because the further along I get with music, the more I realize that each of the tunes that I kind of really pull into my repertoire comes with a story. You don't play it just because it's a cool mu piece of music, or it might be, but but uh, there's an association of some kind. It could be a person, a place, a record that you heard, something that happened that day, you know. Uh, Peg and All, <clears throat> the first of the songs that I just, the song that I sang, um, is an old ballad that I heard on a recording of a great player from Saltville, Virginia. His name was Hobart Smith, and uh, he was a multi-instrumentalist, and he was kind of a, an inspiration to all of us kind of hardcore, old-time music people. Um, and I heard him play it on a recording a long, long time ago that I've never been able to find ever since. And maybe maybe one of our listeners out there can hit me to where I can hear it again, but I don't even yeah, know where Yeah, comment I heard section it. is your time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that, and it, that's been a favorite with me for a long time. The other one, uh, I learned, I, yeah, I can kind of tell you where most everything I play is from. That came from a cassette that somebody gave me in 1976 of a whole bunch of different fiddlers. Oh, so that was a medley of, of two? That was two tunes. Okay. The second one was called The Rebel Raid. It's a Civil War era tune, actually, that was recorded in the 30s by, uh, by one of the fiddlers that Alan Lomax, the, the, the great uh, collector, archivist for the Library of Congress, uh, collected that tune. And uh, I learned it off a recording. But I remember I was living in a little log cabin that I paid 20 bucks a month for in southwest Virginia, freezing my cookies off <laughs> every winter. And uh, some friends came to visit me one time, and they kind of presented me with that. And I spent about a year learning everything on that cassette. So, yeah, everything comes with a story. Yeah, and how about, so the uh, the new record, I imagine that those those stories are of a more international nature. Can yeah, you talk, well, talk a little bit about... Um, the song collection on here, and maybe sure. particularly the one that you're about to play second today. Well, that's a nice segue because uh, the further I got into planning this new recording, which is all guitar music, um, the more I realized that each each of the tunes I chose had a story, and and I spent there's a big fat booklet full of notes in there, but I I uh, I'm gonna cut to me so that people can see this while you're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, uh, I made made sure to write the story. I like to write anyway. Um, but, uh, but I made sure to tell the story of each one because it's, it, it turned into a bit of a musical memoir, <laughs> if you will. Uh, and uh, yeah, lots of experiences with people I, I really love to, to be with and play with. And you know, you, you do something long enough and I, I just feel like a lucky stiff to have had these opportunities to play with people like Elika Frizzell and Solo Sissoko, who's no longer with us and, and uh, just all these different experiences you know it's nice a, well thank you for sharing it with us yeah. today and yeah. um and what is what's the title of the one you're going to do second today the second is going to be i'm going to give you a couple of guitar tunes yeah and the first one you grab my Beautiful. grab me my old martin and soon i will be starting um first one uh i learned off a, a recording given to me on a cassette by somebody who at whose house I taught a workshop in, uh, <laughs> in, oh, I don't know how many years ago in Los Angeles. And he's another old time music enthusiast. And it was a bunch of uh, what I thought was just Mississippi Delta music. But this, this tune comes from a, a guitar player named Little Hat Jones, who lived in, I think, San Antonio, Texas. And he was a street musician trying to support his family because his father was a farmer who, who fell ill and lost his crops over a period of time and so but he was a great great player and uh, I just kind of kind of just took that and kind of ran with it I don't play it anything like he did you know but but it's called uh, bye bye little girl blues or something like that <laughs> Bye-bye. 
my baby, baby, bye bye. Bye bye, little girl, bye bye. If I don't see you no more, God bless you everywhere you go. Bye bye, baby, baby, bye bye. Street all night just looking for you. Walk the street all night in the morning too. I walked the street all night till the moon was shining bright. Honey, babe, what'll I do about you? And it's bye bye, baby, baby, bye bye. Bye bye, little girl, bye bye. If I don't. See you no more. God bless you everywhere you go. Bye bye, baby, baby, bye bye. Baby, baby, bye bye. Bye bye, little girl, bye bye. If I don't see you no more, God bless you everywhere you go. Bye bye, baby, baby, bye bye. I don't see you no more. God bless you everywhere you go. Bye bye, baby, baby, bye bye. Yes. <laughs> Fun stuff. Accidental notes, no charge. <laughs> Bruce, have you ever done anything with uh, with Tommy Emmanuel? Um, no, you got. There's something about your playing styles that seems huh. like it would be complimentary. I'm a fan did, of his music. I've happen. never met him. Yeah, yeah. Cool guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We got to do a session with him years ago. He's, yeah, yeah, he's oh, a cool. fun, fun hang. Wonderful player. Cool. Um, can yeah. you tell me more about that guitar? You and Juan had a chance to to chat about it a little <laughs> bit offline, and uh, Juan had a chance to play okay. it. I would like to know uh, more about it. It's history. Why it's special it's, to you? It's. Uh, as I said before, we kind of went on air here. I'm I'm not a collector at all. But I've, I've been playing so long, you kind of become an accumulator over time. And, and I got this guitar probably 35 years ago. It's a, it's the last of the pre-war Martins, or from the last years of. It's a 1940-0028. And um, it's, a, you know, it's, it's almost all original. I just had a boatload of work done on it. And uh, it's the guitar that I used on, on, uh, on the CD. Yeah. For most of it, not all of it, but it's uh yeah the, these guitars are you know they weren't super collectible there in the beginning and uh, but I like a triple O size guitar it just fits me, and they're good for finger style and they they just have a nice even tone across the across the top so yeah that's that's been my baby it, it you know I don't name my instruments like a lot of people do and I'm afraid I haven't got a name for this one but uh, just my guitar. <laughs> Has it, did it take you a while to find the people that, that you trust to do the work on it? Or is there like a community, is there like well-known people, like a small group well, of people that are the guys or the women that, that it, do this? In the Northeast where I live, uh, there are uh, some really good luthiers. Um, and, you know, TJ, TJ Thompson is a really well-known one. He has a great reputation. I never worked with him. Um, and, uh, of course, not very far from here is Tom Crandall over on Ludlow Street. And he's a fantastic luthier. Yeah. And... And, uh, but this, this work I had done uh, by Lynn Hardy, and she lives up in Woodstock, New York. She's, she's a one-person outfit and does beautiful work and takes the time, and she's a, a really good kind of folk-style guitar player herself, so she kind of she gets the goal, you know. She knows, she knows, yeah. And she knows my playing some. So I, I, she, she uh, just, re just a couple of weeks ago just reset the neck and 
put new frets on it and and uh, just kind of made a, a nice thing nicer. I'm lucky to have it. Nice. Well, good for you. Good for her. Um, is this is that the guitar that's sort of Picasso stylized here on the uh, on the album cover? Well, that 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 uh, that painting there uh, by Juan Gris was done about 1913, so it predates okay. this guitar. <laughs> I just uh, I I really like the painting and because um, it just you know it it looks at the guitar guitar from a whole lot of different angles, which is what I would like folks to think the CD does too. Cool. Cool. I like that a lot. Um, that's uh, how did you just phrase it? A, a, a cool thing made better, or a great thing that just got better? A nice this, thing this made. Album, be a nice yeah. thing made better. Yeah. yeah well. You just made this album better uh, for me. So uh, thank you. I like it. <laughs> great. Man. Yeah. Um, what do you feel like playing third off of Everywhere You Go? I'm gonna play, and it's gonna take me a while to tune my guitar to get there. Um, I had the great pleasure of touring in the early aughts, 2000 aughts, with a, a Swedish fiddler and she's one of the most respected of the folk revival there in Sweden. Her name is Elika Frizzell and uh, her playing partner was Solo Sissoko and Solo was a, um, a griot from southern part of Senegal from Casamas and they had an incredible duet thing going you know where their their music which could not have been you know traditionally any more different um, really had this beautiful confluence and it was really very rhythm based and very soulful and it really moved me and I, I, I got to know them and, and uh, we did some touring way back and um, Elika wrote a waltz that I really really liked and it was brand new, it was fresh out of the can when she first wrote it and I liked it so much and she didn't have a name for it so she named it, she named it for me. So it's Bruce 3-4 and, and Solo uh, who was, as part of the griot tradition, was pl sang, told stories extemporaneously, um, sang this uh, piece called Kairaba. And Kairaba is the na is translates loosely into English as peace farmer. And the story is that he convinces an evil woman to change her ways. And I just love that. And Solo, we lost Solo a few years ago. And so the, I kind of, I took the two crazy melodies that they played in two different time signatures where I would just stand between them on stage just playing chords and tried to put them all on one instrument. So it's been a bit of a science project, but it's really been fun, you know. But give me a second to get here. Any of any anybody who's interested in odd oddball guitar tunings. Yeah, which one is that one? If I ever get there, it's gonna be open G with a C bass. start by looking at my tuner and then I don't look at it anymore. <laughs> and I hope there are no serious uh, Mandinka speakers. Mandinka was Solo's uh, traditional language because you would have a hoot howling at my bad accent <laughs> as I'm about to sing this thing. Is there, for the tuning geeks out there, is there a particular sequence of strings that's important to go in, or are you just repeating bottom to top over and over till they're all there, or is there... Well, there's, there's these open kind of tunings, they're, if there are octaves in them, like I've got an octave of G here, I'll go for that first, and, uh, and then the fifth, and then... The thing that's really pesky is is the uh, is the third, which is the second string in this case. It never sounds in tune to me, but it always sounds the same. <laughs> and then we've got the C on the bottom, which is the four. But I love this tuning. It's just nice and rich. And so here's. Kyra Bob, Bruce 3 4.
Man, we Thank appreciate you. you coming and playing today. Oh. And the tuning, that tuning looks cool on camera. Like you can tell how loose that low string is. Oh, it, it is. vibrates differently on screen. Yeah, yeah. I actually had to put a medium. I play with light strings, but I had to put a medium on the bottom so yeah. it doesn't rattle. <laughs> well, it sounds great. And it's, I'm not even sure how I did this, but I heard, turned on the um, closed captioning on your phone. So I'm watching this. And the closed captions for the for that language that you were just speaking oh, are no. hilarious. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I can't a, wait to see that. Climb a corny, dirty wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, well, thank you very much, man. We appreciate the music. Thank you for, uh, for sharing it with us. Yeah. And congratulations on the record. And, uh, yeah, this has been a total thank pleasure. You. It's a pleasure. Good to see you both. All right, yeah, and man. see you next time. All right, see. You. Take care. So, we did it. Whew, nobody cried. Yeah. Bruce, you have to Thank teach you. me what that last phrase 